Hello. Uh, today's topic is uh, different kinds of memory. And uh, I did something a little different for this in preparation for this. I memorized a piece of music. I ordinarily don't play from memory, uh, but this time I'm going to try. And then uh, when I finish playing, we'll talk about what kinds of memory were involved in this performance. <laughs> memory are involved in this kind of performance. Well, the next slide shows you a list of various forms of memory. Uh, top on the list is uh, uh, active versus inactive memory. So active memory is memory that you actually use at the time. We remember a lot of things that we don't actually use or think about at a given moment, and that's inactive memory, right? You remember your birthday that you had last year, but unless I asked you for it and you were at the store picking out groceries, you're not gonna think about that. So that's in an inactive state. Uh, if I ask you about it, it moves into the active state. And another way in which things are in the active state is that when you first learn something, it's in an active state and it's in what's called short-term memory. And it's lost out of short-term memory unless the memory becomes consolidated, which then moves it into a more permanent long-term uh, state. So short-term versus long-term is, uh, is also a way to characterize uh, memory, but active versus inactive is uh, uh, the f distinction that is more frequently uh, used in contemporary work. Now, uh, of course, in order to uh, play this piece of music, uh, I had to think about this particular piece of music. And so <clears throat> this particular piece of music had to be in the active memory state. Uh, I have no other pieces of music, uh, other melodies, uh, you know, the song Happy Birthday. <laughs> uh, all those things are in inactive memory. And of course, things that are not related to music are in inactive memory when I'm trying to play this piece of music. So, so that's that's the first couple of distinctions. Another distinction is, uh, or another type of memory, I should say, 
is called procedural or implicit. Now to play this piece, there were a lot of fast notes, right? Now, and in order to play the notes correctly, I had to know exactly what position they're in and how to move my hand from one position to another and how to coordinate the, the finger movements on the left hand with the movements of the bow uh, and, and so on. I had to uh, remember all of those details about how to play the instrument. Now, I couldn't really think about all that because I had to think about, you know, what uh, part of the piece comes next. And so all of those details about how to handle the instrument uh, are not in a, in a state of uh, conscious awareness. Uh, they're uh, what's referred to as procedural or implicit memory. These are memory for things uh, that, you know, it controls your behavior pretty powerfully, uh, but you don't have you're not consciously thinking about these things. And so they're implicit. Uh, they're procedural in, in, in the sense that they often involve uh, things about how to do things. Like uh, uh, when a football player catches a, a pass, you know, receiver goes out and then he catches this pass. What is the uh, receiver thinking about? Well, he's thinking about the trajectory of the ball. He's not thinking about exactly what force he needs to use or, or how to grab a football. Uh, he's probably not even thinking about how tall, how high he's going to have to jump in order to catch the ball. Uh, uh, he's not thinking about how to run to be in place as the ball is about to land. Uh, all of that is procedural and implicit. Now, that's in contrast to uh, uh, episodic or declarative memory. Episodic and declarative memory, uh, in those cases, we do have a conscious awareness of remembering. Uh, so if I asked you, you know, what happened at your birthday last year, you're going to think about it, and you will have the feeling of retrieving that inf information. You'll, it will feel like you are remembering. If I ask you what you did last weekend, you will think about it and it will feel like you are remembering and you will be in those cases remembering a specific episode. And so that's episodic me memory. Declarative memory uh, is more general, but it also involves the sense of conscious awareness of remembering. Now, interestingly enough, a lot of our memory operates without this component of conscious awareness of remembering. So that's episodic and declarative memory. And um, it, I, I, while I'm playing this piece, I may remember having played it before, uh, or <laughs> when I played this piece, I remember now uh, how difficult it is to play from memory. And so I got, got kind of nervous. And so that, that's a kind of, you don't want to be thinking about that as you're trying to play the piece. So uh, that those memories were, were, uh, were declarative memories that actually interfered with performance. Semantic memory, uh, in contrast to uh, procedural and implicit memory, procedural and implicit usually have to do with how you do things. Uh, semantic memory is memory for uh, knowledge about the world. You know, how many branches of government, government do we have? Who is president? Uh, you know, uh, what's the capital of Texas and things like that, a semantic memory. <clears throat> and uh, in this course, we have primarily the, the kinds of uh, conditioning and learning procedures that we've been talking about mostly fall into the category of procedural and implicit memory. Uh, the next uh, category here is working memory. Working memory is the memory that you need to finish a job. And uh, uh, the job that I had to do at the beginning of this episode was to perform this piece of music. So that's working memory. And uh, uh, I had to keep things in mind about uh, what parts of the piece I was playing and, and, and so on. Uh, and uh, so working memory is a, t is a form of active active memory, 
and it's uh, a, a special kind of active memory that has to do with uh, completing a job. Now, in completing the job, you have to also make use of reference memory. In completing the job and completing the performance, I had to keep track of, you know, what sections have I played, what sections I'm going to play next, uh, and so on. And once uh, I got through the piece, <laughs> and uh, thank God I got through it, uh, I no longer had to think about any of that. So a working memory involves a form of active memory that keeps information in play only as it, long as it's necessary to finish the job. Once you finish with the job, you don't, have to, you don't have to retain that information anymore. But in order to do the job effectively, you have to make use of uh, information that is with you for a long period of time, uh, such as what is a viola, how to hold a viola, uh, what's a piece of music, what's this particular, who was the composer of this particular music, and so what key was it in, and was there a key change during the course of the music, and so forth. All of that stuff is reference memory. So working memory uh, is short-term memory, um, active memory, but it operates in concert or in coordination with information that you have that you keep with you uh, of, uh, between performances, between jobs. So uh, a mechanic, for example, if he's fixing a car, he has to keep track of what part of the job he's working on. Uh, uh, and once he's finished with the job, he can quit thinking about that. Uh, but he can't quit thinking about everything related to fixing cars. He has to know what is a screwdriver and what the different tools are, what they do, and uh, under what circumstance you use them, what, uh, you know, where the spark plugs are, how to get to a particular part of the uh, engine, and all of those kinds of things. That's all reference memory. So working memory operates in combination with rep reference memory. And another really interesting thing, about uh, uh, doing a job, doing working memory task, uh, is that you have to keep track of what you have to do and what you have already done. So uh, that's retrospective versus prospective memory. Retrospect, we usually think about memory as having to do with events in the past. And that is retrospective memory. Now, in the course of playing this piece of music, you might have noticed that certain themes kind of recur. And uh, they recur recurred in, in different ways. At the end, uh, a particular melody came back in a, in a different key than it, uh, it appeared at the beginning of the piece. So in uh, remembering how to perform the section at the end, I needed to remember what parts of the piece I have already completed. So I had to make use of retrospective memory. But at the, at the same time, I had to keep track of what I have to play next. And that's prospective memory. So uh, although people think about memory as events in the past, Usually it's an interplay, particularly if you're trying to do a job, it's an interplay between uh, uh, retrospective memory and prospective memory with sort of plans for what you're going to do next. Uh, all, all these things happen in uh, plays in football and basketball, you know, various sports. You know, the, um, uh, football, the uh, lineman, everybody lines up and then the play is initiated. You have to remember what parts of the play you, of, of uh, what you're supposed to do has already transpired and what you're going to have to do next. So it's both retrospective and prospective. So and there are lots of different kinds of memory. Uh, they don't all involve having a sense uh, or a conscious feeling of remembering. Uh, many of these things involve no conscious feeling of remembering. Uh, procedural and Im implicit memory, uh, you you're not even aware that you're remembering things. And uh, uh, sometimes you have to remember things in the past and you have to remember things that you plan to do in the future. So memory is a lot of different things. <laughs> and uh, I hope uh, this uh, episode uh, helps you uh, appreciate the complexity of the topic.
Thanks very much. And I hope you will remember what we talked about here and uh, come, up, come back for another episode. We're going to have several units on, on memory. Take care. See you next time.